This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and exciting times here in 2024. Finally, we have ARM processors for Windows that actually perform really well. I mean, they've been around for years and slow, much slower iterations, so they weren't so viable, but now that's changed. And this model is the fastest one that you can actually get with the Snapdragon X Elite 84-100. We're going to look at it now. So this is a Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge Copilot Plus PC 16-inch AMOLED touchscreen laptop. It has a Snapdragon X Elite, 16 gigs of memory, 1 terabyte of storage, and the color is called Sapphire Blue. This video is sponsored by Best Buy. Now we're allowed to say whatever we want about this PC, so that's great. They just want you to shop with them, which you should if you're interested in this laptop. All right, first off, the normal stuff. This has a 16-inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display at 3K resolution, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, variable refresh, so 120 hertz, but it can go as low as a 48 hertz. It has 16 gigs of RAM, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth, and a fingerprint scanner embedded in the power button. Back to the keyboard, as you would expect. Uh, one nice thing about these Copilot Plus PCs, which means the ones with Snapdragons inside with the great AI features, uh, is that they're they're not low-end products you know by any means they're all mid and upper tier and this is one of the the nicest the poshest you can get the build quality is obviously nice samsung does do a good job with that but and it's thin which of course the snapdragon platform allows too it's really thin and i'm glad samsung brought back that kind of sort of like a teardrop profile on the sides i like the look of that a lot it does actually have fans inside, despite the fact this is an ARM processor. Yes, they too sometimes do need cooling and it'll help keep it obviously cooler. I, they never get loud. This thing does not get hot. That is what you would expect. Uh, by the way, if you like 14 inch better, there is an option to get this as a 14 inch as well. All right, now what you want to know, Snapdragon, how good is it, right? The X Elite, it's really, you know, the hype about it that Qualcomm and Microsoft said and people were worried, is this going to be true? It actually really is in terms of native benchmark performance. Like Geekbench 6 is native, for example. So is Cinebench 2024. Uh, yeah, so it is fast. And at the same time, again, it's a cooler, quieter running PC. The other nice thing is when you close the lid and you put it to sleep, it goes to sleep. We all know Windows laptops and that S3 sleep state. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they get hot in your bag because they didn't go to sleep. This really works like you always hoped it would. You're, you're, you're done for the moment. You just close the lid. It goes to sleep. It uses just about no power. It has excellent standby times there. The stuff you would expect from the ARM platform. And for those who are not so technical or geeky, um, you know, ARM platform is the same thing that is in your smartphones and your mobile OS tablets, that sort of thing. It's different from x86 that we've always seen in Windows PCs before. Uh, does Intel have to worry? They're, we're getting to the point where Intel has to worry, and even AMD, with the performance levels that we're seeing here. Now, the caveat, the gotcha, is going to be if a program is not native for ARM, and believe me, lots aren't. Obviously, Windows itself is. Microsoft's products like Microsoft Office, all of that is. Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom are the rest of the suite they say is coming. I think at this point they will. It used to be chicken and egg. Make a PC good enough that we should bother and we will. Now these PCs are good enough and I'm sure they will. Uh, so if something is not native ARM, that doesn't mean you can't run it. You can. It's just going to run an emulation. Microsoft has what they call the Prism emulator built into the operating system. And then you will see more heat, more noise, but not, not egregious. Actually, still not as much as your average Intel Ultrabook um, because it's not quite as efficient when it's running an emulation. Performance and battery life, there is a hit. It's, it really will depend on the application, but for the most part, I didn't see that bad. Now, there's confusion at launch. This feels like a, a rushed launch to me from Microsoft, in part, like recall on the AI features, right? That mm, didn't happen just yet. It's going to be delayed a couple of more weeks. Um, but one of the things is like you go to the Windows App Store and it might only show you ARM programs, which isn't appropriate. It can do x86 emulation here. And Adobe's Creative Cloud. Now, I had downloaded Premiere Pro from the web once I logged in on their website just fine. But if you look at the Creative Cloud application on the desktop, it doesn't show it as available. So they have to work these things out in the meantime. Anyway, you're not that limited. Performance hit, perhaps. So those are things that you should keep in mind. All right, so Copilot features, Copilot Plus features. Uh, these include things like 
tra live translation on the fly. I tested this with several different languages. It actually works really well. This is great if you have a multi-ethnic family or often people work in teams that include international folks, uh, folks in different field offices, and that's, this can be really helpful. Then there's co-creators, so MS Paint. Now, if you start and you do a simple line drawing, it actually can generate a prettier image for you with a bunch of different effects. I'm not so sure about some of them being that great, those effects, but uh, that works as well. And for video calls, there's things like, you know, we're used to things like beautification filters. That's nothing, but you've got stuff that can do things like auto framing you to keep you in frame and uh, to make it seem as though you're always paying attention to the camera. So there are some worthwhile things. And you can see the NPU actually being used if you use Task Manager to take a look at those tasks. So that's one of the benefits of Copilot Plus PCs, or AI PCs in general, is you don't have to pay for tokens and services on the web or you have privacy concerns. It's all done right on your PC. Then we have the Samsung special sauce, of course, because they link to their phones really well. We use this with a Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and with a Galaxy Z Fold 5. So you can do things like just bring up the phone on the desktop and you can actually interact with your phone on the desktop without reaching over to take a look at it. You can use it to do things like text messaging. You can throw files back and forth. So Samsung's working with the Windows link and doing all these added features, which is pretty darn handy. And of course, battery life, important, yes? So we're expecting which are more efficient risk processor should use less battery, and in fact, it does. I'm seeing about two more hours for runtime, so that means that I'm getting 10 hours on this, and this is not a huge battery in the 61.8 watt hour battery that can charge 45% in 30 minutes, by the way, with the, one of the most compact 65 watt USB-C chargers I have ever seen. So that is a nice improvement, uh, and this is, also with a mix of ARM and x86 programs, which will be less efficient for batteries. I'm giving you an average probably of what your workflow might be like. Not that I know you exactly, but you get the drift. And of course, if you're just doing video playback on the lovely AMOLED display, say you set brightness to 50% or so, and since this display is about 400 nits when just in SD ARMA, um, if they claim 22 hours, you can say realistically you're going to get about 16 hours of video streaming. So for those who have in transnational, international flights, yes, you could actually keep going without ever plugging this thing in. Taking a look at the internals, which is more for your intellectual entertainment than anything else, because there's not much you can do here other than, well, replace the battery if you ever needed to. If you need to get inside, there are four screws under the rubber feet, pry them with a really tiny slot head screwdriver, and they pop right out, and there's Phillips head screws in the corners. Then pry off the metal bottom and here are the internals. Battery taking up a great deal of space. Well, Samsung, they are experts in making smartphones and such, aren't they? So this is a very integrated motherboard here. The platform in general has RAM integrated, which is something we've seen with ARM architectures before. Low power DDR 5X, by the way, 16 gigs is what you're going to get here. Uh, but I asked Samsung and they said indeed that the storage, which is available in 512 gig or one terabyte for the 16 inch size, is also integrated. And I certainly don't see a slot. I don't even think there's room for a slot on the underside of this very small motherboard here in the vapor chamber there to cool your components. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look like there's any upgradable storage. So that's not an absolute requirement of this platform. Two cooling fans, you might not expect that, but there they are, again, not too loud. Battery takes up most of the space. And this has quad stereo speakers, and the audio is very nice on this. We have two 5-watt woofers. These are side-firing. And there's two 2-watt two tweeters as well on this laptop. So there you have it. Nothing you're going to be upgrading yourself. And the Wi-Fi is connected here. It looks like that's integrated into the motherboard, too. And these are the Wi-Fi antenna lines right here. So that would be it for the internals. So it all sounds great. So what are any of the drawbacks here? Well, obviously, like I said, not everything is ARM native. So some things you're going to have to do the x86 emulation with. Drivers, if you have um, older or more obscure devices, printers that were made 10 years ago, there might not be ARM native drivers for that. So you have to keep those things in mind. And also, much as I love this display, it is a touchscreen, which is great, uh, but there's no S Pen here, which is a shame because once you get get going with CoCreator and you're supposed to draw something to get it started, it, a pen would be nice. You can use a capacitive stylus with this, but there is no pen. 
And the other, it, you know, folks, this is an ultra book. Okay. So no, it's not a gaming PC and whatever anybody says in the marketing department, uh, the performance on this is fine for older games, for ARM native world of Warcraft or something like that. Yes, it can do that, but you're not going to be playing the latest triple A titles on this because duh, this is not a gaming PC. It does not have a whopping powerful GPU. It has an Adreno GPU that is adequate for Photoshop, honestly, and for everyday tasks. Not so much your hardcore gaming. And again, if you're interested in buying the Galaxy Book for Edge Copilot Plus PC, do check out our link in the description to get it from Best Buy, which is the place you're mostly going to find it in the United States. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.